Hey, it's Josh with Budget Mechanic. Today I'm talking about brake drums and rotors. Now, I think working on your own brakes is a great way to save money. It can be really easy as well until your brake drum or rotor gets stuck to the hub, you can't get it off no matter what, and the brake job becomes super difficult. In today's video, I'm gonna show you some tips and tricks on how to get those stubborn things off. If you're interested, we have lots more brake video content on our channel, you can check it out. And while you're there, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and hit that alert so you don't miss any of our amazing content. So just for clarification, when we're talking about brake drums and brake rotors, or you're going to buy the parts for your car, brake rotors are, are what you have, it's the, the shiny metal disc that you see behind your wheel. And that can be in the front and the rear of a vehicle. Uh, and then a brake drum system with shoes inside is only found on the rear of some vehicles. And it's, it's, you, can't have, you can't see into it from the outside. You have to pull that whole drum off in order to see the parts. Now what they do have in common is if you leave them long enough, they get really stuck either onto the hub or onto the brake pad system itself. So I'm just taking the caliper off as if I was going to change the pads. Any normal brake job. I can't find my hanging hook, so I'm just going to use some wire to hang this caliper up so it doesn't fall and break the break the brake line. Break the brake line. Okay, so I have the brake caliper off, and you can see this is a rotor. And what happens to these, when they get left for a long time, water gets in between the rotor and the hub, and you get rust. Basically welds this to the hub via rust. So you can see this, this little crack in here. This is where it separates and comes off, but there's so much rust in here that this thing gets seized on. Like right now, I should be able to pull this right off. There's nothing holding it on, but it is fixed. So because this is a problem with rust, sticking metal, um, it is helpful if you have some sort of penetrating oil or some sort of rust uh, breakdown spray. You can actually spray it on here in the in the lug the lug holes. Try not to get it on the breaking surface down here and around the top of the the crack there. The thing with that is you really want to spray that on you know a couple hours before you start working, ideally to give it time to work. Um, but it doesn't hurt to spray it on anyway, even if you don't have the time. There's a few methods I use to get a stuck rotor off. The most common and most effective I've found is with a hammer. I'm not talking about a small hammer. You need like a sledgehammer. The bigger the better, at least a small sledgehammer to start with. And uh, you'll have to hit it a lot less the bigger the hammer is. Now, what we wanna do is we wanna smack this rotor in between the studs because that's our trouble area. Obviously we don't wanna hit the studs, the lugs, because it will damage the threads um, and or start backing the lugs out of your hub. So if you're not confident in your hammering abilities, what you can do is just start the lug nuts on so that if you do accidentally bump it, it's not gonna wreck your threads. And then obviously you can't take a big hammer and beat on the braking surface because you'll damage that surface. So um, if you're absolutely sure you're getting rid of this rotor anyway, then it doesn't matter. Or if you have some of those soft metal, like they make like these uh, softer material hammers that people sometimes bang on the back, that can be a little bit more effective. But honestly, I've found a nice sledgehammer between the lugs and uh, it breaks it loose a lot of the time. So I'm just gonna smack this as hard as I can and work my way around the wheel. Trying not to hit these guys. I actually prefer to do without the lug nuts on because I feel like I have more room, but we're gonna get skillful here. So that actually came off pretty easy, but don't be surprised if you've got to hit it like 20 times. I've had some that I thought were impossible, but I just kept on hitting it and eventually it pops it loose. Again, that's why you need the bigger hammer. Otherwise you'll never get enough shock to uh, break that rust loose. So now that I have the rotor off, you can see what I was talking about, where the rust sticks the surfaces together. So I, uh, I flipped the rotor inside out, and this is the inside surface that rests on the hub. 
and when that gets rusty, it's like it welds it down. I would say 90% of the time, the big old hammer method works great on rotors. If it doesn't, I look for these threaded holes. Not all rotors have them, but they're these threaded holes that enable you to drive a bolt in and it connects with the inside of the hub and causes the rotor to be pushed away from the hub, which is what we want. For this method, I need some bolts that fit these holes and I don't really know what size or what thread they are. But one thing that I'll do is I'll pull a bolt from somewhere off the same vehicle because chances are um, it's gonna be standard or metric all throughout the vehicle. And so those bolts are more likely to fit. I'm just hunting for a donor bolt and I think I found a good one. For whatever reason, I've had good results with radiator mounting bolts. They always seem to be the right size. Boom. So I'm threading the bolt in now. Now, if it really fights you when it's starting to come off, you may need to back the bolt out and switch it to the other side or have two going so that you pull it out evenly. Okay, that one came off actually pretty easy. I only had to use the bolt on one side. For really stubborn ones, sometimes when I'm driving the bolt in, it'll get so tight, I'm afraid I'm gonna strip that bolt out. And before that happens, I'll actually stop and go back and, and hit it with a hammer as well in hopes of jarring it loose. So I've always found that the hammer method and the bolt hole method works for me. But in some extreme cases, if it doesn't, there's a third thing you can do. You can go out and buy a designated rotor, it's called a rotor drum puller, and uh, it grabs a hold of the edge of the, of the rotor and has a point on the center of the axle, and with a big wrench, you, you force it to come off. Now, the only bummer with that is they start at around like 130 bucks. You gotta buy them probably online and wait for them to come, but it's still gonna be cheaper than taking your car to a mechanic. Okay, so the last method is one I actually don't recommend, and I've seen a few people on YouTube showing people how to use the caliper bracket holes in the back to uh, run a longer bolt and some nuts through and basically drive a bolt into the back side of the rotor to push it off. And the um, reason I don't like that method is because not only does that bolt potentially damage the surface of your rotor, but it's putting tons of pressure on these, on these tabs. So these tabs, are, are meant to keep the, the caliper from rotating side to side. That's how they're strengthened. If you're doing the bolt, this bolt method here, you're putting tons of strain forward and back on them, which they're not reinforced against, and they're much more likely to break. And if you break one of these tabs off, you are gonna have to replace this entire hub assembly, which would be extremely expensive and labor intensive. So I really don't think it's worth the risk. Here we have the drum brake. So this system works a little bit differently than the rotor because instead of pads grabbing a spinning disc, we have shoes that are on the inside of this drum that push against the outside and slow it down. Now, we have the same troubles. We will get rust in between the lugs that will kind of weld it to the hub, as well as sometimes we'll have problems with the brake shoes interfering. They get grooved and the drum won't come off. Another thing to keep in mind when you're working on drum brakes, you don't want your emergency brake or your parking brake um, on because that's pushing the shoes against the drum, keeping it from coming off. Same methods are gonna apply to this drum as with the rotor. We're gonna start with a big hammer and move on from there if it doesn't work. If the hammer method hadn't been working for me, I do have the threaded holes. You can see right here, I could have driven a bolt in that would draw the drum away from the hub. Um, and then what happens with the drum brake system that can also happen is the rust stickiness can be broken free by the hammer. So it'll, it'll have movement, but it won't actually come off. So you'll see this, this will happen, but you can actually get the drum off. What's happening there is the shoes over time have created a, the, a groove in the inside of the drum. And it, they've s worn away the metal enough that there's actually a lip right here. And there's a mechanism in here that keeps the shoes 
from retracting. Once they've expanded, they stay there. So what they do is they expand out into their little channel and then they get hooked on this, on this lip. And so the solution to that is you have to get in here and adjust the spreader, basically what it is. It's a self-adjusting uh, mechanism. You gotta get in there. There's an access point on the backside on most cars that will allow you to get in there and adjust them back down so that they retract and allow you to pull the drum off. Now this adjuster can be on the top or the bottom of your, of your axle, but there's gonna be a little rubber plug that allows you to get a screwdriver or they actually make a, a brake adjustment tool that'll come in here and you can spin this nut and release the, release the tension. I have the drum off so you can kind of see what's going on, but it's really hard when you can't get the drum off, you're just kind of blindly poking in a hole. Now in some cases, that little adjuster will be seized or you can't reach it, can't adjust it. So therefore you would have to move on to a little bit more extreme operations, um, such as you could unbolt the wheel cylinder from the outside, disconnect the brake line so that it would give you a little bit of playroom to allow you to bring stuff out a little more. If that's not enough room, um, these little retaining springs have a pin that goes out to the back. You would have to figure out how to drill or grind off the, the heads of these pins. And that would allow the pads to come away from the hub and hopefully collapse enough to get the drum off. And if that doesn't work, that would be a scenario where you'd want that giant drum puller that I talked about earlier, where you'd basically clamp on and you would just with sheer brute force, rip everything away from the hub. In doing so, you'd probably damage a lot of the brake shoe hardware, um, but you gotta get it off somehow. Just as a note, some cars will actually have a rotor in the back with an integrated drum in the center for the parking brake. So just be aware of that as you dig in. Thank you all for watching. I hope this was helpful. And as always, please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe and hit the bell.